But um, I'm looking forward now to bringing on our next artist and our next worshiper tonight, Amy Picard from Millsbury, Massachusetts. She plays guitar and sings with an angelic and soulful voice. She's from a large family, but recently became an auntie. And we're going to hear probably a little bit more about that. Did you just become an auntie? I did. So my little nephew is five and a half months. He is absolutely my favorite person in the whole world. Now, this is not your first time being an aunt, is it? It is. It's my first sibling to have a kid. So it's been a huge, just, ah, everybody's so excited. Now, you don't have kids of your own, do you? Oh, no. That, <laughs> I don't even know if I want them, to be <laughs> honest. I'm like, this is too much work. I watch the baby for two hours, and I'm like, okay, take them home. It's so, so beautiful. You can just and love on them, spoil them, and give them back. There you go. <laughs> I can get a full night's sleep. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You got the best of both worlds. Oh yeah. I'm probably dating my son with myself with that song. But oh, um... I know what that is. You're good. <laughs> You're young. So I'm a spring chicken, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> so you've been singing and loving music as long as you can remember. Pretty much, yeah. You just popped out of your mom and Hallelujah. <laughs> I don't remember a time that I wasn't singing. Wow. Now, um, how long have you been singing for Jesus? Is most of your life? or Pre Pretty much, honestly. Um, I grew up in a Christian uh, family, so it's been uh, him since I was a little kid. And then as I got older, then I was like, oh, there's this thing called worship music and like Christian contemporary, which I started to get a little more involved into. Yeah. Now, are you on a worship team right now? I'm not. So my church is a really, really small, just Bible study. So it's the classic uh, piano and a hymn book. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, well, I'm just thrilled to have you tonight. You know, Thank you. Yeah, I saw a little bit of you there online and, and I said, this, this lady, she's got a, like I said, well, the way I could sum it up is angelic and soulful. <laughs> I don't know if that's mm -hmm. what you're going to do tonight, but, <laughs> but are you going to do some, um, some covers, some original songs? What you got going I'm on? I'm going to do one cover, and I'm going to do three originals. Wow. I feel very honored to be here to <laughs> hear that tonight. So, well, I'm going to hand it over to you. And what's the first song you're going to do for us this evening? Uh, this is The Maker by Chris August. I'm not familiar with Chris August, so this will be new to me, I too. I <laughs> love Chris August. He's so good. <laughs> awesome. Looking forward. So, if I like this song, I'll be looking him up. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Awesome. Feel like I could climb a thousand mountains all at once, and I know. 
we got Matthew Woods out there saying, let's go, Amy. <laughs> Who's Matthew Woods? Matthew Woods is a really good friend of mine. Um, actually, he goes to my church. He knows my sister. Like, his, There's a whole backstory to that. Well, he's tuning in, and he's enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Matt. Hi, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to get some original stuff now, right? Oh, yes, you are. Um, the forward. song I'm going to sing right now um, is my song called Perfectly Imperfect. Um, this song I wrote a few months ago. I don't know exactly when it was, um, but it was pretty much me starting out kind of with mental health um, and feeling like I had to put on a face and make myself up for other people um, to accept me. And, um, it was really tough for me. I tried pretty much my whole life to be that sort of people pleaser and, uh, to look the way that others wanted me to look. And it took a long time to come to the realization of being okay with who I am, who I was made to be. So, um, that's pretty much what this song is. So, um, here it goes. <laughs> Definitely not perfect, but I'm perfectly imperfect. It's just the way I like to word it. Some days you may feel like a mess, and that could even be true. Some days I don't like how I dress, but then I think, who do I need to impress? Some days I want to do my hair, and others I just don't care. Cause all that matters at the end of the day Is that God made you you You're perfectly imperfect You You're beautiful just the way you are With all love You wonderful flaws fact that you mentioned the the struggle there's a lot of people resonating with that and if one thing we know during this pandemic is that the subject of our mental health has come to a forefront where we can talk about it instead of being some kind of a thing oh no that's for crazy people no well <laughs> we're all a little bit crazy <laughs> so it's good for us to talk about this right and and you know and god is somebody who's here there for us you know, and we don't have to be perfect. Matter of fact, I think more people appreciate us when we, um, you know, come clean with our humanity. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so that, that, that's a good message in that song. Thank you. So, what else do you have for us tonight? Um, I have another one of my originals. Um, this, um, there's kind of an ongoing joke in my family. It's not necessarily a joke. Um, 
but my family likes to call it my depression song. That's not what it's called. It's called <laughs> a moment. Um, and it's kind of just general um, mental health, if I'm being honest. Um, I started to struggle a lot with it, and I feel like, like you were saying, how it's kind of up and coming, now coming to the surface, which before it was almost like, if you're a Christian, you couldn't deal with the mental health, because when Jesus is in your life, they almost make it out as life is perfect. Well, life well is not perfect. If you look at the book of Psalms, when when God was putting together the scriptures, the Holy Spirit orchestrating the canon of the scriptures, he made sure that all of David's rantings in the book of Psalms were included. Mm -hmm. And some of them were not necessarily godly in, in and of themselves. They were very human. Mm -hmm. He would be saying, God, you have forsaken me. Where are you? Why, do I, why are all my enemies blessed and I'm always cursed? But then he turned around and said, but you are my rock, you are my salvation. And I know that in the end you will prevail and blah, blah, blah. So, yes. So God, yeah, I think, puts a stamp of approval on us being open and honest about what we're going through. And, you know, and if he's contributed to us uh, being saved out of that, we need to give him glory for that too. This is what that kind of, this song is kind of about, is kind of like going through that struggle and then kind of like, like the good part that comes out of it is like towards the end of, because when you hear a lot of depression songs, it's usually, there's no purpose in the end. Like, it's just like all about depression. I'm depressed. My life sucks. I'm the depressed end. and nothing else. The like, there needs to be an end goal here. Like, yes, I'm happy ending. It, like, a, sol a solution. Exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. And I'm glad you have the solution. I'm glad you're going to share. And the solution has a name. And what his name is? Jesus. Yes. <laughs> How you go for it? <laughs> All right, here we go. Sometimes I wish my brain couldn't think Cause depression has been hitting me too hard
awesome awesome <laughs> We have a fan out there, Josh Gammon, and he's, he's saying that this song is going to be the top 20 on, on Christian Media Spotlight. Have you been playing on Christian Media Spotlight, too? So the Perfectly Imperfect song is the one that's been playing on Christian uh, Media Spotlight. So Josh has been trying to get me to number one. <laughs> awesome. Josh is a good good guy. <laughs> yeah, so supportive. So Awesome. So, right, you have another song for us this evening. Um, I do. Um, so this one I wrote many years ago. I had to be close to nine years old. <laughs> I was really young. And so in the song, I, I guess I really wanted to scream a lot. So the word scream was in there. And then as I got older, I was like, we're going to take the screaming out and not make it so harsh. Um, so it says saying. So any point that it says saying. It used to be screaming. Well, you um, could do some screamo on Red's Room if you need to do that. <laughs> if, you need to, if you need to get it all out, sister, we're here for you. <laughs> well, I don't need to scream right now, so we're going to stick with saying. But age nine, you're already writing songs. Well, I've been writing songs for as little as I can remember, um, but age nine was when they actually started to become like real songs instead of little little ones that i'd sing and all of a sudden i'd start singing them and my my family would start like they'd be like oh i thought i heard that on the radio and they just start singing one of my songs and i'm like what are you doing like, <laughs> that's for me <laughs> there was so i have this thing that um so i'm the baby of six and um four of my siblings have already gotten married and i wrote each of them a song to play on their wedding beautiful and so the first sister that got married, I wanted to kind of keep it a secret so that they couldn't hear it until like that day. And my mom's over there like singing it while she's like going in the fridge. And I was like, what are you doing, mom? Like you're going to blow this whole thing for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you got acclimated your song before they <laughs> heard you sing it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So awesome. So what is the song that you're going to be singing for us called? Um, I honestly don't really have a name for it. I never named it. So if anybody has uh, recommendations on what I should name it, Calls. go for it. I'm an open book to that. Screaming at nine. <laughs> Screaming at nine. That will be the name. Screaming at nine. <laughs> yeah, ladies and gentlemen, Screaming at nine. <laughs> <laughs>
Awesome. <laughs> so you, I, I noticed you put the word screaming back in it. It was good. And I'm just putting two and two together so that if you're singing at age nine, I don't care if people think I'm insane. And now 20 years later saying, I think it's okay to talk about, you know, our mental health. Well, it sounds like you were already talking about it back then. Oh, I knew I was insane. <laughs> I was a baby of six. If I wasn't insane, something was really wrong with me. <laughs> I don't even know what that means, but that's, that's funny. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, it's been such a pleasure having you on tonight, you know, and um, I think everyone, you're very relatable. And I think people appreciate that, right? You're, you're real. I hope so, you're, because you're... I try, I try so hard. And when I mess up, sometimes I beat myself up for it, but I'm like, I can't anymore. I just, I'm, I'm a real person. But what if you give each, what if you give us permission to mess up and for that to be okay? Exactly. <laughs> I know I've got my share of uh, mess ups, you know, whether it's technical or whatever, you know, but um, yep. it's, you know, it's a pleasure to have you on here tonight and I hope Thank you can you come so back much. many, many more times in the future. Thank you. And uh, hopefully we can meet you sometime in the future. You're a little bit far. <laughs> we're over in yeah. Southern California, the exact opposite corner of the country, but yep. you know, for God, nothing, nothing's impossible. Yeah. And I, I pray that God will continue to use you, you know, your music and um, just use a person in your life and your openness to, to be a blessing to many people. Thank you. All right. Well, anything, any last thing you want to say before we um, introduce our next um, artist tonight? I don't think so. I think that's it. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, God bless you. Awesome. Thank awesome. You. awesome.